see to make a new rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. This is not live. This is not live. It's an amalgam of stuff from uh, uh, this past week. Right? Well, this this bit's new, right? This bit but also isn't live. For me, it's Sabbath, so I'm, uh, so I'm offline. Anyway, it's been a bit of a tumultuous week here in Doctor Who, right? In Doctor Who fandom. I thought we should have a little... Um, uh, take stock. Look, uh, take a step back. Take stock and see see where we are. Because I, I don't think it's any way good, right? I don't think we're in a particularly good place. And I think um, you know, I, I, I kind of get the feeling. <laughs> you remember that famous Twilight Zone, right? Where uh, they have that book to serve man, and they pick the people to go up to the uh, the spaceship to be ser to to serve man, right? And they said. At the end, as he's getting in the spaceship, this woman comes and says, No! We translated the book to serve man! It's a cookbook! Dun dun dun! Right? So, uh, and they, he realizes the uh, uh, the terrible deal he made with, 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 with the devil as he gets ushered in, you know, into his spaceship to become dinner. So I, I kind of get the feeling that's exactly where Russell T. Davis is right now with this whole thing of the uh, the roller. And yes, it's a very, very big deal, right? It's a very big deal. And it's a, uh, it's a big deal for many reasons, not least because it is a stupid idea that fails on every level and will almost certainly damage the show, right? I... I I think the chances of it going beyond two seasons now are very small, right? And the only reason two seasons, because they've already filmed a good chunk of the second season. But I think the chance of it going beyond two seasons is very small for several reasons, right? For several reasons. So let's talk about the, the, the damage that this rollout does. So if you don't know, the rollout is in, on New York time at 7 p.m. Uh, it airs on Disney+. Plus, and uh, at the same time, it gets released on iPlayer. Two episodes, apparently, on Mail Up. May 11th, uh, at midnight. So it's American-centric. The rollout is American-centric. Now, the reasons I've heard for this is that Disney only premieres new shows on uh, Fridays and Wednesdays. I mean, it seems to be a bit of a stupid, arbitrary rule. But uh, it, so it had to go on Friday. We didn't have to. They they chose to, right? It, again, this is all their own choice. They chose to. But what it's doing is it's robbing it of its any momentum it could build up in the UK. And I don't think it had much to start with, frankly. But it's really robbing it of its uh, any momentum it's going to have to go forward. Firstly, uh, it's buried at midnight. The whole event TV doesn't work, right? If we ever really if it premiered at seven p.m on Saturday, on iPlayer and on uh, uh, TV, then it, then it will be event TV, right? Everybody, and I think people would really kind of tune in. But moreover, if they did it on May the 4th, uh, instead of dropping two episodes at once, so you kind of lose both of them, right? And both those are episodes that you want attention to. One is the, the premiere and the other one is the... Uh, the the music one with uh, the Beatles and Jinx Monsoon. This is a what this is a big deal. That one, right? So uh, I think that seems like the perfect episode. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't like Jinx Monsoon being a bad guy or be, being involved with Doctor Who. I think it's grooming, like quite literal grooming. I think it's uh, trying to normalise cross dressing to minors, right? And I, I I don't think that's a good idea, right? If look, if you're somebody who likes to cross dress. That's fine. If you're somebody who's tra trans, that's fine. I, I, I don't feel a need to uh, evangelize my Judaism, my, my religion, right? I, you Do you, baby? <laughs> I don't need you to do what I do to validate me, which is what I think it is. I really do. I think it's people, uh, you know, narcissists. We live in a very narcissistic world. I think it's narcissists looking for validation, via um, what I can only describe as child abuse, right? So I'm not on board with... Um, and I'm, I'm sure Jinx Monsoon is a lovely person and very talented. This is not a, anything against uh, them, her, him, in jet, whatever whatever pronoun they are. It's, it's nothing against them. It's against this, um, this desire to normalise very fringe sexual attitudes, which I think will only be... Um, uh, Damaging, right? But that being said, it's a major episode for them, right? And doing that on the night of Eurovision uh, would, uh, as a sole episode, would have really worked, right? Would have absolutely re really worked. It, uh, it was kind of 
it, it, that saved up nicely. But having two episodes one night, we're gonna you're not gonna pay attention to both of them. And, and again, it loses the the momentum. So they're like, well, Doctor Who's an international brand. Why should it? Why you know? Why should it matter? It's gonna be no because as we as we learn with successful movie franchises, the MCU, I think being being a good example. It's you get the people who are excited for the movies to be sheepdogs for the normies, right? They, if there's, that's why I think the MCU was so successful. We all were so excited. Oh my God, look at that! It's a comic book accurate Iron Man. That looks so cool. It's Thor. Oh man, that looks beautiful. And, and the and the fans were excited by it. And I think that generated excitement for the normies. That is sucked out of this new era of Doctor Who, right? It's it, it's really crippled the launch. Um, so I, I don't think it's going to be that successful. I think it had a lot going against it as it is. I think the, you know, they're like real hard, uh, doubling, tripling, quadrupling down on normalizing cross-dressing. Um, it is ultimately, look, I th look, again, if you're trans, you got to understand nobody's denying you exist. We just uh, don't share your worldview that people with penises can be women, right? It's it, just in the same way. I don't share the worldview with like uh, uh, Muslims that uh, uh, Muhammad, whatever, whatever his, his claim to the, the divinity was, right? I don't dislike Muslims because of that. Hopefully, no, you know, we, we can we can all li live together. I'm not denying your reality. I'm just saying I don't believe your reality. It's a, it's a matter of faith, right? And I think screaming, oh, it's all, it's, it's ridiculous, right? I don't think there's anybody attacking. But anyway. Um, but I think that uh, weird sexual attitude is what Russell Abels was very, very excited about uh, working with Disney. I think he, they very much agree with the same social and political uh, worldview. And now he's found out that he's at the bo bottom of the barrel. I mean, like, again, I can only imagine that he strenuously fought against it and lost completely. Uh, because anybody who understands what this property is understands how damaging this is it it, I, it might be a killer right equally it, uh, i i think if uh, russell sees uh, his efforts being hampered in this way uh he, i don't see him having any desire to continue I, 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 how long is he contracted for frankly right uh, uh, i don't know i don't know Look, it's a good gig there's 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 money in it i guess but how long? Yeah, you know, how long is he contracted for? Uh, um, so I don't see him wanting to continue if this was forced on him. If it was, it makes it only the only thing I can really say that makes sense is this was forced on him because it goes counter to literally everything we've ever heard him say, right? So I, um, it's it's again the stupidity of it is just breathtaking, but it fits so into Disney management. It really, I don't frankly BBC management as well. But um, so yeah, look if they if if they premiered at seven o'clock on BBC right on Saturday and at two p.m. that that be simultaneously in New York, that would have worked right. That would have worked. It would have made it England centric. Because here's the thing: there's no appointment viewing outside of uh, outside of England. That's only in England. Right, that's the only place you're going to get people sitting around and watching it together as a family, right? And it might have really brought back family viewing, but I again, it's killed it, right? It's absolutely killed it because by the time it rolls around, it's not even new news anymore. When I do my review of it, I'm going to review them after they go out on uh, uh, in England on on, on terrestrial. And then, I'll, but again, I'm reviewing two episodes. You're losing focus, right? You're losing focus, and you're saying very clearly. This is not your show anymore. We, we don't give a damn about you. We really don't give a damn about you. Uh, and we don't give a damn about the show. It is not, it's not something that's worthwhile anyway. It's just content. It's content for Disney, which they're shitting out uh, all over us. And uh, it just, I think it, it spells ill. Uh, how this will affect the rest of Doctor Who, I don't know. Look, look Jodie Whittaker... Uh, seem to make every aspect of Doctor Who suck. Even things like the comic books, audio uh, audio stuff from Big Finish, everything kind of, he rendered a sucking vortex. Is this going to be the same thing? I do not know. Anyway, so I talk about that a lot this week. Uh, the first clip we're going to see is uh, from last night where me and Dam, uh, Dam Hadley, go and subscribe to his channel, The Space Book and Type 40 Live. Uh, and uh, uh, wax and okay, then, then I'll go, you'll go, we'll go through the different stories. Look at this. This has been the story of the week. I think it's probably the story, the story of the year. Um, I, I maybe maybe the quality of, of the episodes will be good enough to overcome it. I doubt it, right? I doubt it. Who knows what this is? Fine, let me hand over to me and Dan from last night. 
Yeah, yeah. Being a Doctor Who fan, uh, when we are supposed to be at the threshold of a of an all new uh, era and a time for celebration and hope, is starting to feel a little bit. <laughs> well, <laughs> well. Th- th- listen, listen. There might might be some, a, a new piece of news you want to know, right? A new piece of news uh, okay. just came out, came out a few minutes ago. Okay. Right. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. Yeah. yeah I, I, stop telling mm. me it's good. Right? Stop yeah. telling me it's going to be good. Show me it being good. They keep right? telling me stuff's good, Rabbi. They keep telling me things that people like Jinx Monsoon are big stars. And that I should be yeah. excited. Yeah. They, you know what? It's they, not working. They, they, they can only bullshit you so many times. Well, right? mate. I, it's been two and a half years now since Bad Wolf got this show. This is two and a half years yes. of of lead up to this. Uh, they've got to stop jangling the keys now. Like, and they have no idea what they're doing. No. Like, <laughs> they have no idea what's going on. Like, like, I, like, I'm, I, I somewhat <laughs> believe the Ross Lee Davis isn't happy about the uh, mm, uh, release of this. By the way, have you got your season 15 Blu-ray yet? You know what? Yeah. This is an exclusive. It arrived about an hour ago. It's in a oh, brown... white point in the mail. I can't wait for it to come. It's in a big brown carton at the moment. Oh. It's on my it's on my sofa. Oh, I, I, I love unboxing yet. them. They are gorgeous, right? Like we may live in a nadir of Doctor Who. That is what that is a absolute gorgeous piece of merchandise. I, I'm so excited to get mine. I agree. I I, com- I completely agree. I mean, every time these things roll around, I mean, obviously, I think we'd all like them to to be able to do the three every year. I think they are back on schedule. We're getting there. We're getting there. There's 11 left, 11 le- uh, more to come, uh, but uh, you're well past the halfway mark. I love it. Don't tell me the rabbi's frozen again. Mate, are you there? Wave. Wave if you can hear me. I've not, have I knocked him out again, everybody? Is that, what, is that what's happening? Am I coming on the stream and it's somehow reflecting? Oh, we're back. We're back. He's back. Yes. Thank heaven. We. <laughs> I thought it was you that was going. I was like, really? I'm surprised. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't remember what I was saying, but yeah, I mean, generally, yeah, the, the trailer, uh, yeah, all that sort of trailer come in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 like, just, we heard it too many times before, right? We, well, I said, well, good news that your season 15 has arrived. That, that's, it uh, is. That's, that's where it's re- uh, reasonably cheerful. Now, again, I, I, <laughs> I am somewhat of the uh, belief that... Um, Rusty Davis is not happy about this uh, rollout, right? He, he's not happy about uh, uh, he like he he believes in the communal event TV, and this destroys it completely, right? Absolutely, completely. What where, where, where where's you? Where are you on that? Because you, I'm, I'm intrigued. Uh, well, I'm doing I'm doing a whole show about it this evening, so I'm trying to keep keep it all in the in the barrel. But but right. um, I mean, where do I feel about Russell? I I uh, it wouldn't surprise me. If and you know, people, I think I've been pretty out, pretty uh, upfront about the fact that I've been a fan of Russell T Davis for most of his career, and uh, I've been accused of carrying water for him. And I'll excuse him anything. I won't. There's been lots of things he's done that I haven't liked, but right. I think everything, everything that he's done has been uh, competent and creatively successful, and uh, done with a good heart. I always thought. Um, in, in this instance, though, I think that. I think that he didn't know what he was getting into by seeking a deal with Disney, by seeking this, by seeking that, and and now finds himself in a position where, just as you describe, where some of the core principles, the things that he's been telling us about, not just for the last couple of years, but a lot of the virtues that he's been extolling for 10, 15, 20 years, uh, are, are, are being uh, threatened by the consequences of his own decisions. And so the conclusion that you've drawn, Rabbi, it's completely... Re- Anybody who's followed the man's career and everything that he said over even just the last five years, that conclusion that you've drawn is perfectly reasonable and provable. Uh, and he's going again. Oh, you can hear me. I've got, uh, oh, am okay. I back again? There yeah. you go. I was like, I was like oh, I'm glad you agree, because like, that's, that's what somewhat you know, uh, indicative uh, that uh, uh, it's not us, right? It's her. She's fucking useless at everything. Celebrity Bake Off fans issue the same complaint over Doctor Who's Jodie Whittaker. She's shit! Get her off my show! On Sunday night, Channel 4 viewers saw Doctor Who star enter the Bake Off tent alongside Manya Chawawa. <laughs> what the fuck? 
Is this is this set in Star Wars? What the hell? Uh, with Bib Fortuna, apparently. And wah, 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 wah. what the fuck is this thing? Mawa wah, Chihuahua. What the fuck? Um, okay. Manwa Chihuahua. Look, okay, her name is Chihuahua. Okay. Uh, Palomi Faith and Spencer Matthews. Okay. I don't know who any of those people are. Viewers were less than impressed during Sunday's night's uh, Great Celebrity Bake Off for the uh, stand uh, for the Stand Up to Cancer special. During the episode, the well-known stars were given three challenges to complete. Uh, uh, if it was not being shit constantly, I, I don't think I don't think uh, Jody can do that, right? I don't think can do that. Oh, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson's net worth as so much he's likely to make from James Bond, and this is I, yeah, we're going to look that up next. Right, Aaron Taylor. I know we're Jewish James Bond. I'm happy about that. And uh, looks like James Bond as well. Anyway, fine. We'll get back to that in a second. Uh, started by creating pops, then they had to tackle a twisted New York favorite in a in a technical before judges. Poor Holly. Okay, what the fuck? What, what did she do wrong? Okay. Uh, it wasn't long before fans took to Twitter to share their thoughts on the situation. Said, no way! Jodie Whittaker should have won that. What? So they, they like Jodie Whittaker. These, that, that's not what happened in Doctor Who. In Doctor Who, we hated her with every fiber of our being. Right? She was uh, uh, just relentlessly shit. Like, like relentlessly shit. Right? Uh, she's a winner. No, Okay. How did Doctor Who fans have that complaint? Jodie Whittaker was robbed. Okay. During the episode, the 30, uh, 31 year old had a slightly chaotic time uh, in the tent after her bowl shattered, trying to mix her and get her to get. Oh, God. Oh, God. So this is this. I, and you chose this for the doctor. Like, this is okay for, like, idiot mother. But not for Doctor Bloody Who. Oh man, this is uh, embarrassing. Well, speaking uh, to Paul Hodder, which he confessed, I think I went too aggressive with that. With uh, with the uh, at the top with my energy, I've chilled out now. No, just go away. Go, okay, Jody. Your five minutes of fame, which you didn't deserve, are over now. Fuck off. Oh, fuck the bye bye. You're a shit actress. Leave us alone. Right? Leave us and I yeah, I mean that with all sincerity. Just leave us alone. Go away. Fine, let's have a look. Um uh, uh, what's this? Doctor Who Showrun expresses this point about new season's release schedule. Well, let's have a look. Especially in its CBR, which is like one of the shilliest places of what the world. So if it's in any, any other outlets. Uh, oh, this is something we really need to look at as well. Yeah, they all see Disney going down, 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 and down. This, uh, okay, fine. Well, when did he say he was disappointed? Uh, Doctor Who Channel expresses disappointment. New season's release schedule. Well, you, you aren't you involved in this, Russell? I mean, in any way, shape, or bloody form. Wrong with you, mate. Either boy. Okay. Uh, Doctor Sharon, uh, uh, Rusty Davis appears to show some disapproval over New Duck Fire. So when does he show us that? Uh, Return Doctor Sharon, Rusty Davis has voiced his concern for the show's newly announced release schedule on social media. As noted in the Independent, Eagle Eye uh, fans noted that Davis uh, liked a series of posts criticizing. Oh, interesting. Chris, on the way. The new season of Doctor Who is being released. As announced last week, each new episode will de debut at midnight on BBC iPlayer in the UK before... This is a BBC decision! Oh! Well, that's interesting. That is interesting. This is a BBC decision, and he said it was an imbecil imbecilic BBC decision, and he's not happy with it. Oh man, that changes everything, right? Everything, man. I got to tell Dan this Dan has been really black black pilled, right? Uh, uh, yeah, let's send him a message right now, right? Let's send a message right now. Uh, 
I think. What are we up to? Go over to Messenger. One second. Fine, here we go. Send a message. Dan, I am the ti- I have a uh, uh, bearer of tidings which may be good news, right? Maybe good news. Uh, uh, I understand that you know people, uh, maybe yourself included, somewhat blackpilled at this new release schedule. And like, how is Russell D. Davis being so stupid? I mean, I'm doing this live stream right now, literally right now. Uh, uh, time index for it is one hour, 10 minutes, and 19 seconds in. Uh, uh, how could Russell D. Davis be so stupid? Right? So st- stupid, like with this. Uh, uh, so apparently, he's not on board for it either. He thinks it's a dumb move as well. It was foisted on him by the BBC. I'm reading an article right now on CBR.com. Go check it out. Uh, hopefully that's the case. That, that'll be good. Fine. Uh, before hang on Saturday night, BBC One, Davis had previously shared the show, the show much he enjoys the communal aspects of uh, share release time, which is uh, what, what the series uh, previously had. David Tennant's three specials uh, last year, along with Shooting Gat was like Christmas special, were released in the old format, but BBC and Disney now looks set to make a big change. And they're stupid. Oh, okay. Well, look at that. Rossley Davis actually redeeming himself there in my eyes. Well done, Rossley Davis. Uh, uh, Rossley Davis. Maybe not a total cockwomble. <laughs> cockwomble. They're the worst kinds. Uh, one of the posts that Davis liked was a comment. Below his post with the Instagram writing, he said, I'm a bit upset about this. I imagine uh, it wasn't down to you because I know how much you uh, believe in terrestrial, uh, terrestrial uh, television viewing. I just really hope that this is changed for season two. I don't know. New evidence of the murder days of mine, uh, also joined by Stephen Moffat in the new era. Uh, of the Yeah, because they're saying, uh, what was it? Uh, rumors swirling. Because uh, Alison Serling has updated her CV to include the Christmas special, which listed uh, uh, Stephen Moffat as the writer. All right, so uh, I would hope that's true. That's actually really very, very encouraging, right? That the that roughly, and it makes sense. Oh, because I think that's a problem that I had with this. But anyway, that just doesn't make any bloody sense. You know what the hell's going on? It makes zero sense. Okay, well that's actually good to know. Let's see if uh, Bleeding Call talks about this as well. Bleeding. The Bleeding Call. Doink. Uh, Doctor Who. Doctor Who. The TARDIS. I can't. I, 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 I type Doctor Who. I always do that. Can't not, right? Can't not. It's just uh, uh, a nervous tick over. <sighs> Let's go over here. No, nothing new. Nothing new. Fine. Let's look at this story, right? Uh, uh, now, this I find very interesting. By the way, compare this uh, uh, Jane Tranter. Let me see if I can find her. Jane Tranter, Bad Wolf. Let's see if I can find a like, publicity picture with uh, Jane Tranter and... Uh, there you go. Uh, uh, here they, this is the one. This is the one. Hot and milky. <laughs> Like, like how do I copy image address? Open image new tab. There you go. Hot and milfy, right? That is, uh, uh, they, they, these do not like. She does not look like the same person uh, uh, as this person. She's like, fuck me, life is hard. Uh, I'm hot and milfy. Hot and milfy, life is hard. <laughs> so this is it. Dr. Bruce Jane Trander says British TV tax credits. Must be updated amid over reliance on Hollywood investment, meaning this is going uh, bankrupt, right? Uh, 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 we'll look at this in deadline a minute. I do want to look at this, uh, uh, Doctor Who's uh, the James Bond story. Uh, where are we up to? Jane Tranter, the co founder of Doctor Who, uh, and his dark material producer, uh, Bad Wolf, is called the on the UK government to update the British tax credits uh, to promote uh, domestic investment. Uh, look, there is no... Uh, Britain is a disaster because of the bloody politicians. They're not going to help you with anything, darling. Trying to one of the BBC's... Uh, one of the UK's most highly regarded producers, that's true, has uh, uh, said television voice got lost in the 
UK's recent spring budget and introduced a game-changing 40% British indie, uh, which introduced a, a game-changing 40% British indie film release, right? A relief, we were. It's like, like hand relief, but, you know, uh, uh, less satisfying. Trana said, um, similar thought needs to be given to existing TV tax incentives. Look, here's one big problem you all have. You're, make, you're spending too money, move much money on TV shows. Uh, and I don't think this is happening with Doctor Who, but it's happening with everything else in Disney. You're spending it too much because you don't have good writers, right? And you have to refill everything. Like, it, you're doubling your budget for no reason. Right, Trata said, uh, uh, says similar thought needs to be given to the tax incentive. Uh, uh, Tim Kelmover reliant on Hollywood investors. No, make cheaper looking shows for God's sake, right? Like, yeah, I think they should go back to doing Star Trek 22 episodes a year, right? Why can't you do that? They used to do that. I, I, that, I really think it needs to go and with, with the production values to that would that would match that, which are fine. Right, it's totally fine. Uh, she added that the cuts of the BBC and IB has examined the situation. Well, the cuts of the BBC and, and, and ITV because you don't give a shit what the public says, right? What the public wants, you just couldn't care less, right? And we keep telling you, stop with your gay shit. No. Oh, we got a Yasmin Finney save Doctor Who by being trans. Oh, the magical power of being a chick with a dick, right? Chick with a dick. Oh, he feels I'm like, no, stop with your bullshit. You're not being stunning and brave. You're giving everyone a fucking headache. And that's why you lost most viewers. It was like um, my, my Democrat friend was asking me if I was watching Curb Your Enthusiasm, which is a very dewy show. I said, ah, no, I, I quit. I watched the first two episodes, but there's so much like Trump derangement syndrome in it. Uh, I couldn't be bothered. And so I basically said, listen, I stopped watching it for the same reason that they are good. What, 60% of the people, 6% of the population have stopped watching TV in general because it's just full of Trump derangement syndrome insanity. Just stop already. Uh, Trata was giving evidence to the UK Parliament, uh, Parliament's Culture, uh, UK and Sport Committee which examining the challenges facing the film and the high-end television industry. Get rid of the high-end television. Just make TV. All right? For God's sake, just TV. It doesn't have to look as, as you know, cinematic as you keep insisting. It doesn't. Having said that, I did enjoy my, it was, I, I do want, I did enjoy Marcia for looking very cinematic. Um, we need to look at some lower-end shows. Uh, which are too UK focused to really attract any inward uh, any inward investment, and they're becoming increasingly difficult to make. Uh, it's gotten a bit out of whack. Productions for those lower cost shows, in the same uh, same way, my colleagues uh, excellently got 15 million for uh, and under films in the UK will, will be re really helpful. Well, I'm sure you want more money. She added, the US studios should be forced to make commitments to the UK economy. No. No. You should all work for yourself. Fucking hell. Again, make cheaper shows. Fuck what? Make cheaper shows, you fuckwits. Oh, I mean, it's that simple. Why should they be forced to make deals uh, to the UK economy? What have they got to do with it? Right? Uh, including training investment outside the UK to access tax credits. Uh, she said that this will stop global giants uh, housing, produ uh, housing production in Britain, uh, making it a quick buck and then leaving. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, your only hope is Donald Trump. And are any of you going to vote for him? Uh, of course not. The former BBC executive argued that the pandemic, US strikes, and streamer re uh, retrenchment has exposed the UK's dependence on Hollywood. Uh, what it has done is it made the uh, made the UK industry very, very aware of how reliant it is on inward investment and how that isn't uh, always the way. Well, again, you need to start entertaining the public again and stop lecturing the public and stop your fucking whining. If you're going to lecture us, stop your fucking whining, which is what all I fucking hear from you. Make a good fucking TV show. Oh, I mean that with yeah, stop your fucking whining, right? 
Stop your whining, yeah, and I concentrate more on be being that drain chanter. Yes, hot and milky chain chanter, real drain chain chanter. Hot and milky chain chanter, real drain chain chanter. <laughs> Sorry, chain chanter. Uh, um, Doctor Who says, uh, Doctor Who TV says, why it's uh, Doctor Who's new schedule is not a, a big, uh, not that big of a deal. Everyone disagrees with you. Now, don't get me wrong, uh, Luke uh, Lundy. I, 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 everyone is entitled to their own opinion. And I will look at what you're putting through uh, 40 case. I may disagree with you. I may take the piss as I disagree. It doesn't mean that it's not a sign of disrespect. Uh, uh, unless you, you know, sorry, I, that deserves to be disrespect. It really isn't, right? I would like to hear this point of view. The doctor has been on, in a rather rocky position for several years now. Yes, audience attention spans. And even shifting that digital landscape, uh, and even uh, the emphasis in digital landscape, and even the status of the BBC itself has been questioned due to uh, political uh, political uncertainty. And that political uncertainty brought around by being political activists rather than entertaining, right? They don't educate and entertain. They it's political activism. After the even Moffat's departure, there was a question whether they could even find a new showrunner before eventually visiting Chris Chimmel to take over. Uh, well, I think uh, to Toby, I think Toby Whithouse would have done it, right? When Chimmel's five-year, uh, three-series contract was coming to an end, BBC decided to make this. Uh, he had a, uh, a five-year uh, uh, plan, not a five-year, three-series contract. Uh, the BBC decided to make certain uh, moves to ensure the show's future, so a partnership was formed. BBC gave full creative control of Doctor Who to Bad Wolf, but not, apparently not the scheduling, uh, who returned as, uh, uh, and Russell Evans returned as showrun. We all looked so good then. It was all so optimistic, and then it all went downhill. Uh, Bad Wolf was a visit of Sony and a partner in good standing with the Disney Corporation. Thus, uh, the BBC sold Doctor Who streaming service rights to Disney, ensuring a, a potentially larger audience worldwide, giving the show the best chance to survive in the future. Um, that's a fair take on it, right? There's been plenty of hand wringing interpretation that the show was going to take over, uh, Disney was going to take over entirely in the whole show, uh, love show, that it will become disney fight. It did, right? It has done, right? Um, at least with the specials, at least with the David Tennant ones. <sighs> It depends how much uh, relentless perversion they want to try and normalize, right? Because they like to not normalize that a lot. That's what I mean by Disney fight. Well, uh, BBC Bad Wolf Disney go, uh, do not go, uh, do give Rusty Davis notes. The BBC, because the BBC owns the property, Bad Wolf is technically his employer and Disney streaming platform, uh, all reasonable excuses, but does have uh, full creative control and final say on creative. Uh, he is, however, a big fan of Pixie and Disney uh, Disney stuff. So any Disneyfication effect, uh, if any at all, will come in uh, come from him. I tend to agree with you there, right? I, I wouldn't call it a Disneyfication at all. I would say it's, uh, you know, Russell Davis and Disney have exactly the same outlook. I think they probably egg each other along too much, right? That's probably a problem, right? They probably, yeah, let's get more gay. More gay. Really? No, yeah, but let's get more gay. Okay, we can add in a snowman scene. Well, that's excellent. Right? Excellent, excellent. Uh, here we go up to uh, the location. Uh, so we'll come from, I, uh, I recover all this ground to uh, just to make it clear there are no bad guys here. Everyone has put uh, their face on Russell Davis to deliver the best show he can to ensure the show's long term future. I agree. Okay. Uh, uh, but unfortunately, he's not up for the job. He's not the man we used to know, right? He's just not up for the job anymore. And it is sad, you know, but I mean, look, he fucked up right off the bat with Davros. Uh, uh, he didn't stop fucking up. The, his best bet was uh, the uh, church, church on Ruby Road, which pissed a lot of people off for different reasons this time. It pissed people off because um, it was too fantasy, right? It was like there wasn't a scientific explanation for the goblins. I, I think there probably will be one as a throwaway line coming at some point, like something about like reality. Reality is changing. I think the whole 
the whole like uh, gravity becoming mavity thing is a big deal, and I know they're going to go back to that, right? Uh, uh, and the woman from that scene, the 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 um, how was it? The Indian uh, Isaac Newton's oh, come back. Indian Isaac Newton's uh, um, housekeeper. She's going to be the big bad for the series. She's in all these different places. So I don't know. Uh, and American Specs. Now the broadcast schedule has been announced, and some fans, uh, UK fans, uh, are not all are upset. No, all of them are, mate, right? All of them are. <laughs> Everyone's upset, right? It, 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 it's pretty overwhelming, right? I don't, you have some, you have a, a minority, right? I would say you have less fans that are upset than you had fans that were upset at the casting of Jodie Whittaker before they saw her, right? Uh, yeah, it's a very small demographic. It's a very, very small demographic. Uh, uh, it all seems to boil down to Britain first. Yeah, actually it does, right? It's a British show. It actually does. Full disclosure, I'm an American fan of Doctor Who, and ever since discovering it in 1980, uh, there were two very uh, basic but very important vital requirements. So first, it be good. Second, it retains its Britishness. We all agree. Uh, over here, us Doctor Who fans were dependent on the local people. I understand you had a different cultural experience watching Doctor Who. This is a national cultural uh, experience, having it on a Saturday nights, right? It's a national cultural experience. Right, this is um, this is like I know having um, you like, like American Christmas on and TV and American TV sucks, right? It's uh, uh, just football, right? And if I said, oh man, they put football on again, they're like, what? Right? What? I I, I don't like. Uh, how can you not have football? No, this is our this is our culture, right? I understand you. This this you're from a different culture. I'm not blaming you, but. Uh, um, this is the culture that it was born from. And this is, even though you don't see it, it is a vital part of its Britishness, right? Uh, an American fan of Doctor Who ever since, blah, 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 blah. Over here we have PBS uh, and carry all the classic series. And uh, uh, so we were always a years behind the current season and the show's popularity reached its pinnacle in the 1980s. We had to go to conventions to see newer episodes. But we waited, except uh, when the 20th anniversary show, The Five Doctors, came out. We actually saw that first because the BBC wanted to wait and show it during Chil the Children's Needs special. Uh, even today, there's still some Brits that are annoyed that uh, it was first, even some 40 years or so later. Well, he, uh, yes. Are you getting that? Are you picking up this is a sensitive topic? Right. When the show revived in 2005, we didn't even get have access to it on TV. No, we had to, we had to illegally download it. I, by the way, I uh, did you watch the bootleg version that came out before it aired, which had the Tom Baker uh, music on it, the uh, opening and closing titles? It, it, it was really weird. It was really weird. Uh, we had to legally download it. Uh, have have no fear. I purchased all the DVDs sets when they finally were made available, but then my family would would huddle around a laptop to watch the latest episode. We were uh, we went on for a year or so. Finally, BBC America started broadcasting new seasons. Now our wait time is down to six or seven hours behind the UK uh, to see the episodes from uh, 2007 to 2022. Fair enough. Uh, with each and every new episode, we had to avoid spoilers. And, uh, and look, the, just the, uh, from numbers, it's you, there's so much fewer of you. There's like a couple of hundred thousand watch it in the in the uh, US. It's like Minimally three million Geo in the UK. Uh so it's a much bigger, it's a prime audience, right? Uh where well, it really wasn't a big deal. The lone note uh notable exception was the day, day of the doctor, 50th anniversary special, which was broadcast similarly simultaneously around the world. It was shown at 1 p.m. our time. Uh but what did it matter? We loved the show. Well, again, you, you're not really let's see addressing the claims. Now, uh, with the new uh, broadcast schedule, has been uh, uh, has the new episodes dropping simultaneously around the world uh, at a 7 p.m. Eastern time. That's a problem. Drop on simultaneously, but have it 7 p.m. in the UK uh, at midnight uh, in the UK on iPlayer. Then 
then later than uh, that uh, that evening on the uh, on BBC proper. Again, not all Brits are upset about it. Most of them are, right? Dude, most of them are. Right? This has been a very uniting thing in fan because most people are upset by it. They, they really, it's really properly upset as well. Um, again, uh, not all Brits are upset, but I couldn't say, uh, I couldn't even say most are. Yes, they are. But those are the sides of the following complaints. One, they have to avoid spoilers all day until uh, BBC uh, be on the BBC that evening. Okay, they want to continue the tradition to watch it with their family. They don't like Americans seeing it first. Well, and again, it's a massive piece of culture, right? And that's really the bottom line. It's a massive piece of culture that it airs first in the UK. One, I can only speak for myself, but the opportunity to watch a new episode, I'm going to watch a new episode instead of. Uh, Wandering on the internet, stumbling on uh, into spoilers. Two, anyone who makes a conscious decision to wait until the show until it's shown on BBC to watch it uh, with their family can surely extend that decision to not wander around the internet for a few hours. Uh, at least they pull yourself together. Three, I do not believe that uh, that uh, this is the biggest point point of contention that we are getting the show first, uh, but we're not. You are. It's not getting the show first. It's being scheduled around you, right? It's being scheduled around you as opposed to being scheduled around the British public. Who's paying for it, right? Who who this belongs to? This, 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 I, we everybody likes you liking it too, right? Don't get us wrong, but like it's yeah, it's a problem, right? For those over here who aren't paying with Disney Plus, I'm not even sure BBC America will still be getting the show. Well, yeah, you have to still get it somewhere. So. uh those not pay, paying for iPlayer uh, will still see it uh, well, uh, well before us. We'll have to wait and, uh, for the disc. That, that's insane. You're saying, if I don't buy it, if I don't pay to see it, then I've got to wait for the box set. Well, yes, that's an irrelevancy. Uh, the iPlayer and scheduling. Let's talk about the iPlayer. This wonderful entity that really exploded last year, spewing forth the Hooniverse, not, not, in, uh, uh, you know, not uh, only in England. Right, but Russell Davis' master plan. Those of you who have gotten to see all the uh, tales of the Tyler's colorized version of the Daleks, so many other things. The former is only available in snippets on YouTube. Uh, I'm still waiting for my disc to arrive. Yeah, again, again, this is a piece of British culture, right? This is not, yeah, yeah, you're not, this is not yours. You can come, you can watch it, we like you watching it, but this is a piece of man national culture. Uh, and I agree with you. It's it was shitty and stupid not to roll out some kind of Hooniverse on Disney Plus, right? It is shitty and stupid. Uh, um, yeah, it really is. Uh, where I'm still waiting for my the, the iPlayer is it, indeed one thing, so it can deliver all these new episodes to you. Uh, so, you, uh, so you can see them wherever, whenever you want. Now, I'm sure our meetings are plenty about uh, actually dropping the new episodes, and I'm sure the suggestion to drop them simultaneously around the world at 7 p.m. UK time, 1 p.m. here. Uh, however, uh, the BBC schedule is always shifting and changing. I'm sure the BBC's partners uh, in this endeavour, specifically Disney, uh, who not who who not only streaming the show worldwide, but putting a majority... Is the majority of money into it? I don't know. Would like a reliable, consistent drop uh, drop time each week. They're, listen, that Jane Tranter article was them saying they're not getting a third season from Disney. I, I, I don't think they're going to be on season two. I don't think this era is lasting. Um, and quite frankly, I'm not sad about that at all. Uh, Bruno Martin and Johnny into it, uh, reliable consistent drop time. They, they have a good point there. BBC should have a reliable consistent drop time. And you know, I don't think people will mind if it's like a 10 15 minute difference, right? Like, but like, this is ridiculous. It needs to be scheduled around British scheduling, right? Uh, it would be reliable because it's drop time. Well, it had it during Jody, well, it needed it to protect it. BBC does seem to give preference to shows like Strictly Come Dancing Over Who. Uh, so the current arrangement was probably considered the most efficient. I think we also have to consider uh, where 
where we are with those two basic grunts, the show being good and the show being British. The good part is up to Russell. So far, again, I like Judy Gatwell. I like Millie Gibson. Um, we have to see what... Uh, it's actually how gay you make it, right? I have to see how relentlessly gay you make it. If you make it relentlessly gay, it'll suck, right? Uh, I mean, part of being gay, I guess. <laughs> it's a good thing if you're gay. Um, uh, just British as ever... And the show is just still as British as ever was. Well, it's no, it's not. Because back in 2005, there was pride to be British. Now there's now Russell is ashamed to be British. Uh, after Russell left the show in 2010, he went to America for quite a while, working on projects, ideas. I guarantee you that's where the meetings, uh, that's where meetings on meetings with American version of Doctor Who was pitched. Endlessly, mercilessly, studios wanted to do something, Americanized version, as have uh, so many things uh, originating over there, but it didn't happen. Russell undoubtedly made the case that it wouldn't, couldn't work. I disagree with you. I disagree with you. I think the uh, an American Doctor would have worked. I mean, could hit. Let me say. Let me say. This is a famous thing, right? Uh, uh, somebody did a Doctor Who USA thing. One second. Doctor Who USA. Where is it? Yeah, yeah. This is what if Doctor Who were, uh, was an American show, and it, it's amazing how well it works. And it's like classic, but oh, you'll see in a second. Uh, download, doink. So I actually think the format is flexible enough to do a uh, um, an, uh, an American. But oh yeah. But the Dodd Rocks uh, came up with the idea of Peter Dinklage as a doctor. I think that's quite a good idea. Ah, is it downloaded yet? Video file. There you go. Doing. Yeah, 50 years of American Doctor. I've been this racket for 50 years. You know what I've done? I have done it all. And without my imagination, I wouldn't have a sense of humor. I should explain that my presence here could either be termed as circumstantial or the force of destiny. I mean, I mean, that, that, this is all great casting. Vincent Price, I love it, right? I love circumstantial it. Circumstantial or the force of destiny. Now then, precisely what is it that you want of me? What? Again, I, 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 it's really, really clever. I totally want Really wonder. went on between Marilyn Monroe and the Kennedys. And who really pulled the trigger on JFK? I'm telling you, you're in for one big surprise. One. Oh, I, I would love to see a Christopher Walken Doctor Who. Man, that would be crazy. Very big surprise. You were right. I am not human. Listen, I've sized up the strength of the enemy forces. Next week, I go for first strike, all out victory. Uh, yeah, good class, you know, Jeff Goldblum, he, he'll be a good doctor. If there's something wrong, those who. <laughs> Have the ability to take action, have the responsibility to take action. We thought the days of losing lives were behind us. I ask Sam Rockwell is just a great actor. I ask you now to prepare for war. When the war is over, we can have the luxury of debating the morality of what we do. <laughs> oh, never underestimate the power of one man. I know I don't. I'd never Spoke be could do that away before. Well, maybe it's about time. Leave me alone, or I will destroy your whole planet. Can we talk this over? Uh, anyway, you get the idea. It's a it's a cool little thing. Uh, it is a cool little thing. So yeah, I I think it's I think it could work. I think it would work. Uh, it's something I'd like to see Big Finish do. <laughs> but Big Finish, they're on their ass, I think. Uh, Doctor of the Future, much healthier than it did a couple of years ago. It's, I think it hasn't. I think Russell's fumbled this ball, mate. I, I really do. I think Russell's fumbled this ball and fucked this up. I, I, I that's really, really generally what I think is going down. Uh, speaking of big finish, let's see what's going on over there. Uh, don't get thinking about it. There you go. Oh, they got a cam and sell that you should get. How much is it? Uh, I mean, they're, they're half price. They're, they're excellent, right? They are both excellent. Oh my gosh, strong recommend, right? Strong recommend. I like their calendar stuff. Yeah, I, uh, some of the best news. That's what I'm going to look at. There is, uh, I 
thought there was a. They announced it on Facebook, but not here. What? Oh, here, one second. How how is this not on the news page? Fine. So they announced a new uh, new box coming in June, uh, uh, and they don't half play down Sullivan and Cross on the cover, right? There's like Tom Baker, Master. Uh, uh, oh, look in the corner. There's Sullivan and Cross. They don't half downplay that. Uh, for good reason. It wasn't that great, right? It wasn't that great. So you got how many? It's three stories. How many episodes is it? Three discs. Okay, so you got three two-part stories essentially. Backstage again. Again, <laughs> look at her. Like, like, yeah, she would never be cast as a Doctor Who companion. Never in a million bloody years. And, and God bless her. I have nothing against her, but she would never be cast as a Doctor Who companion. Um. So yeah, so this uh, well, let's, let's read. This. We've got uh, Aurora, Aurora F uh, Fernley. I'm gonna make a guess that Aurora wasn't the name she was given when she when she was born, right? I think she's some kind of uh, hippy dippy flower child, and her name's probably Phyllis. You know, uh, I just don't know if that's true for uh, uh, other, other writers. So they did the story. Okay, the recent past to the from the recent past to the far future. Dr. Harry and Naomi find themselves battling old foes and you from the Malevents. Oh, I like the Malevents. They're, they're a really great villain, I think. If they're the... No, is it the Malevents I'm thinking of? Malevents are... Um, I think it's the Malevents. Right? They're this, like, gas that inhabits people. It's really cool. Uh, from the Malevents to the Master uh, and the traps of the toy maker uh, lurks around every corner. And sometimes in the last shape you would expect. Oh, they don't even have a net badland on the cover. Right? It looks like what why don't they have a net? They should have she should be on the cover as a toy maker. You see, oh, you see like, kind of a toy maker's garb over there, but uh costume. Maybe they're gonna show something else, uh have a different cover because there's a spoiler in here or something. So fine, the first one is Matra Matroska. When a strange horse drags the TARDIS to Earth, it's clear that the Doctor and Harry and Nomi are up against an incredible powerful being. This must be Toy Maker one. And when they enter Lord Pearson, uh, the inventor of games and to okay, obviously Toy Maker one, and search for his vanished daughter, it becomes clear exactly that they might be uh, that being uh, who that being might be, Hide and Seek is one of the simplest games in, uh, devised by man, but the hands of the toy maker also one of the deadliest. I mean, again, I think just the sex swapping of it, just but for the, for no other no reason to show off. Oh, look, we can fuck another thing over with another idiotic sex swap. Right? I, I need, like, like, the meddling nun is just a disaster, darling. I hate to tell you, it's not good. Fine, so they got one talk toy making story. The cage is owned by Matthew Sweet. Okay, so this should be a very traditional. It's very e unusual to find a tiger in the TARDIS, but it's even more unusual to find one uh, one heavily dosed in radiation. Uh, so it sounds very Douglas Adams. I can imagine that sort of thing he'll do. But this is from the far most of the unusual occurrence. Uh, the Doctor, Naomi Harry, uh, Naomi Harry, are going to encounter today because they are about to meet Charles Jarmatch. Supplier of exotic animals to rich and royals, uh, who is unaware that his famous menagerie or conceals a deadly terror, a strange creature out of a blood. Okay, and metamorphosis is mostly the master one. Fine, the people of the planet Jackson are vanishing when the doctor and his friends land. Naomi is snatched away by a mysterious fog and taken to a prison run by a very old foe of the doctor. Okay, the master is here. And he has a very sinister scheme underway, but neither Naomi, uh, yeah, Naomi nor Harry know uh, who he is. Can the Doctor stop his plans and rescue the prisoners, or will the companions inadvertently aid his own? I don't really care, right? I don't really care. I, I'm just uh, look. I, I I didn't get the last one. Um, 
and and I, I listened to the first episode. And I was very glad I didn't get the last one. Right. When I did a, my non-review of that, I had uh, Dave Mullen, who's who, who's a very good uh, commentator, say, "Yeah, he listened to it, and it was a slog getting through it." Right. Uh, and I believe it probably was. Right. I believe it. I, you know, I believe it probably was. Uh, Jasper announced Moffat is writer for one of the season one episodes. Well, there you go. Hey. Uh, we'll, we'll look for that one next in a second. Um, but yeah, I, I'm out. I'm out. I'm not getting this. No, <laughs> right? This is a this is a hard no. But why this isn't on their news page is beyond me. <laughs> right? It's really beyond me. I don't know. I don't know. It's very strange. Right? Very strange. Here, let me uh, see if I can find that. Uh, let's look at Twitter. Twitter, so we can make up Stephen Moffat. Uh, Twit, twit, twat. I think X.com is actually easier to do. Uh, let's go to BBC Doctor Who. Let's see if they got, got it there. Yeah, here we go. Fine. So Stephen Moffat returns to Doctor Who, former showrunner, uh, makes a, an explosive return as he writes. And so the shooting out was first season of Doctor Who. Uh, find out who uh, who will be directing more. I don't really care who's directing. More. We'll look at more details. Why not? If it's going to open up, come on, come on. It's thinking about it. It's thinking about it. Come on, can you do it? There we go. Internal server. Uh, internal server error. Okay, let's look at Radio Times. See if they put it up there. Uh, do, 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 do. we'll look at the James Bond. I keep saying we're going to look at the James Bond thing in a minute. TV sci fi, uh, Ratman Superpower Netflix series Supercell unveils action packed trailer. And here we go. Uh, uh, Stephen Moffat praises new Doctor Who release schedule, jokes about complaints. <laughs> uh, Thought going to be the only chance to write Doctor Who. Fine, no, it's not there yet. It's over here. No, no. Uh, the, defend the experimentals. Let's try to make it. Look, I wish they could just accept sometimes they do something shit. Right? Let's see if this works again. Doctor.tv. Let's see if I, if I can just come up with a meet the new doctor. Yeah, it must have crashed its server or something. Like, no, who cares? Oh, okay, fine. Stephen Moffat's writing it. There's no content in your region, she cried. Fine. Ladies, yeah, what happens if yeah, what happens click view all? Like, I mean, again, this is a metaphor for this era. Nothing fucking works. Okay, I don't care. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Oh, no, internal server error. My name's Vila Beck in the Rabbi from Another Planet. Please like, share, and subscribe. And ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. Yeah!